Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm gonna to show you how I make carne adobada, which is a tender, slow-cooked pork that's been marinated in this delicious New Mexico red chili sauce. It's one many of you have requested, and it's one of my personal favorites. First, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to this channel. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps others find me. And let's get cooking. So before people start getting up in arms about the spelling, let me just say that growing up in New Mexico, I always saw adobada spelled with a V. It wasn't until I had it elsewhere that I saw it spelled with a B, which I'll admit does make sense when you consider adobo is spelled with a B, but I gotta be real honest with you, I really don't care how it's spelled so long as it tastes good. And for it to be good, I only use New Mexico red chili pods. Now they come in hot, medium, or mild, so use uh, whatever your heat preference is. I like mine with a little kick, and I'm going with about 10 pods here. Now you'll also need about four or five pounds of pork butt or shoulder. This this is more than that because when I went to the store, I could only find it with bone in. So I'm gonna have to carefully cut around that bone. Now, aside from that, you'll also need four to five cloves of garlic, one tablespoon Mexican oregano, one tablespoon cumin. You'll need some salt to taste, a couple of bay leaves, and then this is optional, but I like to sprinkle a little flour over the pork just before I fry it, because it helps it to form just a little crust and then uh, also helps to thicken the sauce, but you'll be fine with or without it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm first going to cut the pork meat into pieces that are about two inches in size. And just so you know, I don't cut off all the fat. Only when it's a big piece like here on the bottom, I will definitely cut that off. But otherwise the fat just um, adds to the flavor. It helps keep it really juicy. When I've got all my pieces cut, I just place them in a bowl and season with kosher salt, making sure all the pork meat is seasoned. Then I'll place it in the refrigerator while I make the chili sauce. For this, I'm just taking the red chili pods and removing the stem, then opening it up to remove the seeds. When I've got all the pods cleaned out, I give them a quick rinse to remove any dirt. Then I place them in a bowl and pour very hot water over them. I let them steep for about 10 to 15 minutes until they begin to rehydrate and soften. I then take the softened chilies and place them in my blender along with the garlic, the oregano, cumin, and about a teaspoon of salt. I add in only about two cups of the chili water because I like it a little thicker for adobada, but you can add a little more if you like. Let it blend for quite a while until I no longer see flecks of chili spinning around and it's all just a smooth sauce. Once it's done, I heat my Dutch oven over medium high heat, and you can use any large oven safe pot so long as it has a lid, and I put enough oil in it to coat the bottom. I take the pork meat out of the refrigerator and quickly sprinkle a little flour over it and get it all coated. Again, the flour is optional. I dump the meat into the pot and let it sear on all sides. This just helps build flavor, but when you've got this much meat crowded into the pan, don't expect it to brown. Just sear it as best you can.
Then we can pour the chili sauce over the pork meat and stir to get it all combined. That color looks so beautiful. We're going to let it reach a boil and cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. So at this point, you can go ahead and drop in the bay leaves and put the lid on. Next, carefully transfer your covered pot into the oven that's been preheated to 325 degrees. And now we wait. You let it braise for about two to three hours until the meat is fall apart tender. It's been two hours since I put the carne adobada in the oven and you're gonna see that it is fork tender. And were I to have left it in longer, it would only continue to get more tender, but you can see that I can easily run a fork right through it and it just breaks apart. I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for just a bit and I'm quickly gonna make some refried beans and tortillas and we're gonna eat good tonight. Just looking at this makes my mouth water. You've got this beautiful red color and it smells so good. And I can see that the meat is just breaking apart. It is so tender. I can hardly wait to try it. I'm gonna dig in. <laughs> and I'm having a hard time picking it up because it's breaking up. Mm. Wow. The flavors are just out of this world. The garnet practically melts in your mouth. And of course, I love red chili. It's just so good. Perfect seasoning, just the right amount of kick. I really hope you try this. Now, I know there's a lot of different ways to make carne adobada, but for me, nothing beats slow cooking it in the oven. Hope you try it. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.